This is a video about removal of your implanted venous port and tunneled catheter. The port is the implanted device that allows easy access to your veins. Your healthcare team recommends that you have your port device and tunneled catheter removed. It is important that you watch this video before your procedure so you will understand and know what to expect. There are many reasons for removing the port. You may be finished with treatment and no longer need your port and tunneled catheter, require a different type of CVC, or your treatment no longer requires the use of a port, or you have a medical problem such as a severe blood clot, infection, a break or crack in the device, or some other issue with the device. The procedure is done as an outpatient or in the hospital if you are an inpatient. As part of the informed consent process, this video describes the procedure and possible problems that could occur with removal of the port and tunneled catheter. On the day of your procedure, the healthcare team will review this information with you and answer any questions you may have about the procedure and care after your procedure. You will be asked to sign a consent form before the procedure. The port and tunneled catheter is removed as a whole unit from where you had it placed, either the jugular vein, the subclavian vein, the femoral vein, or the cephalic vein. Most times, the provider uses the same incision that was made when it was placed to remove the port and tunneled catheter. There are risks with any type of procedure or surgery. Although the risks of having a problem with the removal procedure are low, problems can occur. These include the following. Bleeding. Some light bleeding may occur at the incision site, but it is usually controlled during the procedure. Although very rare, some patients may need surgery to stop the bleeding. Hematoma is another risk. This happens when blood or fluid collects under the incision. Tell your healthcare team if you have any swelling or pain at the incision site after the procedure. Developing an infection is a possible risk. Signs and symptoms of infection include fever with redness, pain at the incision site, and swelling and drainage. Go to the nearest hospital emergency center if you have any of these signs or symptoms, or tell your nurse if you are an inpatient. Other possible risks include issues with the catheter or port system. If a break or crack is seen in the catheter or device during the removal procedure, an X-ray may be needed to look for any piece that may have been moved into the vessel. This may involve a referral to an interventional radiologist who can retrieve the piece if needed. In some cases, this may require surgery, but this is usually not very common. Also, patients who have had their ports for a long time, usually three or more years, may develop scar tissue around the device and the port catheter can get stuck. This may make it difficult to remove the catheter. If this happens, the device may be left in place and removed in the operating room at a later time. If you take blood thinning medicine or a medicine that increases your risk of bleeding, Talk with your healthcare team. We will tell you if it is safe for you to continue this medicine or if you need to stop the medicine before the procedure. It is okay to eat and drink fluids before the procedure unless anesthesia will be used. Your procedure may be delayed if these instructions are not followed correctly. Also, wear clothes that are easy to remove and leave jewelry at home or with the person that is with you. If you are an outpatient, we will give you instructions for the report time and procedure location the day before your procedure. Be sure to sign in at the front desk when you arrive for your procedure. Then, we will take you to an exam room and ask you to change into a hospital gown with it open to the front. The procedure is done by a proceduralist, such as a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant. This person is a healthcare provider with special training to do procedures like this one. Before your procedure, the proceduralist reviews your medical history and asks you several health and symptom related questions to make sure you are able to have this procedure. They will review the procedure with you and answer any questions you may have before you sign the consent form. If you are anxious, we may give you medicine to help you relax. 
If we do give you medicine to help you relax, you will need to have someone who can stay with you for at least three hours after the procedure and drive you home. This medicine can cause you to forget some things that happened just before or while under the influence of the medicine. We cannot give you this medicine if your blood pressure is low or if you take a narcotic pain medicine. In some cases, patients with extreme anxiety or for other medical reasons may need to have the procedure done while under general anesthesia. This needs to be arranged in advance and involves a consult with the anesthesia and procedure team for any special instructions. You will lie down for the procedure. A nurse will clean the skin around the procedure area with a solution that kills germs. A sterile cover is placed over your body. A needle is used to numb your skin with a local anesthetic. The anesthetic is a medicine that blocks pain during the procedure. You will have a burning feeling as the medicine is injected, but it will not last long. It is common to feel a little discomfort during the procedure, but if you feel sharp pain or extreme discomfort, tell the proceduralist. The proceduralist uses a scalpel to cut and reopen the old incision above your port and gently removes the catheter. A cautery device may also be used to help remove tissue around the port and control bleeding. Once the catheter is removed, the proceduralist will then remove the port. Next, the proceduralist washes the area with saline and then closes the incision with stitches. These stitches will dissolve on their own and do not need to be removed. A steri strip or surgical glue and dressing is placed over the incision site. We may apply a special dressing to your wound and leave it open if the port is removed because of an infection. If this is the case, a wound care specialist checks and continues to monitor the wound until the infection goes away. After the procedure is done, you will receive wound care instructions. It is important to watch for signs and symptoms after the procedure. These include pain that gets worse, swelling, fever, or signs of infection such as drainage or redness at the incision site. If you have any of these signs or symptoms, call the procedure care team or your healthcare team for instructions or go to the nearest hospital emergency room right away if it is after normal business hours. After watching this video, be sure you understand the implanted venous port and tunneled catheter removal procedure and the benefits, risks, and problems that could occur from the procedure. Talk with your healthcare team if you have any questions about the information covered in this video.